Rev it up and welcome to Cars Yeah. This is show number 1733. Today, we're going to do some pinstriping. This is Cars Yeah, where you'll enjoy interviews with inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Mark Green is here to provide you with a fuel injection of automotive inspiration. So get in, sit down, buckle up, and get ready for a wild ride here on Cars Yeah. Hello, inspiring automotive enthusiasts, and welcome to Cars Yeah. Today, I'm in Youngstown, Ohio, with a very special creative guest by the name of Keith Sturgeon. Hey, Keith, welcome to Cars Yeah. Are you buckled up and ready for a fun ride? I'm ready to go. All right, we'll have some fun here. Now, before I give you a proper introduction, would you share one little thing that most people don't know about you? Ooh, okay, trick question here. I'm a really nice guy. <laughs> <laughs> now, why would people not know that? That's the bigger question, I guess. No, um, you know what? I, I don't. I don't know. Everybody knows a lot about me because I'm not shy. So that's that's a real tough one. I'll have to come back to that one later on if I could. <laughs> well, we'll just say you're a nice guy, and most people don't think so. But I don't think that's really the truth here. But. Uh, <laughs> That's okay with me. Let me give you a proper introduction, and we're going to dive into some questions here. Keith Sturgeon is a pinstriper and a lifelong car and bike enthusiast. His day job is as a customer service rep for a very large rubber compound company, and his love for art and pinstriping has evolved into a unique spin with his brush. Keith paints portraits along with pinstriping, and he does these portraits with pinstripes. That's very interesting. What started as a hobby has become a passion and his art is owned by enthusiasts, including some past Cars Yeah guests by the name of Dave Kindig, Mark Workman, and a guy that I've always wanted to get on the show and one day I'm going to land him, the great Jay Leno. Keith loves working on old cars, doing custom body work and paint, and restored a 2004 V-Star classic motorcycle that earned him a winning trophy at the show. Keith's passion to pinstriping and creating art is fast becoming a path to a whole new career as a full-time artist. We'll be back in just a moment to talk with Keith to learn more about this fun he's having, but first a word from our sponsors, so sit tight. We'll be right back. Did you know that Covercraft offers you much, much more than just car covers, floor mats, seat covers, and trunk liners? When you visit Covercraft.com, you'll find Cologne Custom Bras, Labra Front End Covers, and hood protectors that protect your vehicle's front end during road trips. No more rock chips or hours removing nasty bow jerky from the grill or your paint. You'll find vehicle seatback organizers that keep everything in check. They're perfect for those kids' things in the back seat. Spidey gear webs that keep the cargo in your truck bed safely in place. Seat heaters, cargo bars, pro nets, rooftop carriers, and pet travel barriers that keep Fido in the back seat where he belongs. They even make tire covers for winter storage or summer storage of your tires. And don't forget their dash mat dashboard covers that shield the sun's damaging rays and their sunscreens, one of my personal favorites. Their pet protection pads are easy to install. They remove and are washable. They protect your floors, seats from Fido's damaging claws and messy fur and hair. Everything at Covercraft is carefully engineered and, of course, always quality made and i've got a great deal for you if you use the code yeah 120 at covercraft.com you get 10 percent off your covercraft order that's right 10 percent off just use the code yeah 120 y-e-a-h 120 at checkout covercraft protecting the things that move you when it was time to renew my last policy for my collector car my carrier's rates went up they went way up but my usage was the same, and I never had made a claim. No tickets, nothing. What's with that? American Collectors Insurance, that's who now protects my Porsche Turbo. The one I call my orange crush. Has your collector car insurance recently raised your rates for no good reason? Tired of paying an annual membership fee? I was too. So I shopped around, I asked friends for recommendations, and found a winner that I can trust. And boy, am I glad I did. I'm saving hundreds of dollars. I can sleep at night knowing my baby is properly insured. American Collectors Insurance have been protecting vehicles since 1976. They provide me with an agreed value insurance policy backed by a history of taking care of their clients. What could be better than that? Give them a call for a quote today at 866 aci yeah 
That's 866-224-9324. And protect the ones you love like I did. American Collectors Insurance. Classic car insurance designed by collectors for collectors. All right, Keith, we're back. And as we continue on this journey that I'm going to call your life, I would love for you to share a success quote or a mantra, some kind of saying that's been instrumental in forming your life and your success. It's a nice way to get the uh, motorcycle wheels spinning here or the uh, pinstriping brush moving across the surface. How you guys do that? I'm going to find that out today. So Keith, grab the wheel or twist the wrist. Yeah, uh, I, I just believe in um, treating others the way you want to be treated. Do you disrespect me? I'm sorry you didn't like me or whatever, but I'm going to. I'm still going to come back and and be nice to you because that's just. I try to do that with everything and everybody. You know, if you want someone to treat you good, you got to treat them good. Down the line, that's with everything and everybody. Yeah, it's the old golden rule: do unto others as you would have them do unto you. It's- exactly. I remember attending church as a little kid and Bible school and so forth, and you learn that. And it's a pretty simple thing, but unfortunately, not a lot of people, let's say some people, don't really know that, and they don't do that. And I found in life that if you just treat people with respect, no matter who it is, who you encounter, be kind to them. You know what? They'll be kind back to you. So it's something that definitely works. And obviously, in your life, both in your day job and in your pinstriping, it's obviously worked for you. Yeah, it has. Uh, I've met a lot of people. I my customers. <laughs> it's it's quite funny. Some of the, I mean, I've never sat, seen, seen them, met them, but just over the phone, we have good conversations. And I've had get one customer call me, and we started talking, and then he forgot he wanted to place an order. And he hung up. <laughs> Half hour later, he called me back up and says, "Man." I really enjoyed talking to you. I forgot to order my compounds. <laughs> <laughs> we were having so much fun. Yeah. We, well, yeah, you know, it's so. just being kind to people. It's a pretty simple thing and it's important way, way to go through life. And with what we dealt with last year uh, and what we're continuing to deal with now until this uh, pandemic is uh, over with and gone, uh, I think being kind to people is even more important than ever because everybody's on edge. Everybody's got pent up angst. And uh, yeah, it's really, really important. I want to dive into what you're doing here because I've had lots of guests on the show whose day job or career is not necessarily in the automotive industry, but their passion is somewhere else. And they're trying to find a way to make that their full-time job. Now, pinstriping is a work of art that I've always held in awe. When you watch a pinstriper work and you can go on YouTube and watch people and you go, how are they doing that? How are they so steady? And you know what it reminds me of, Keith? When I was a kid, I made models and I remember getting the Batmobile model. And along all those edges was red pinstripe that Barris did back in the day. I tried and tried to make that thing look good and you always have a sloppy motion or whatever. So I want to start by asking you, how did you get into pinstriping? Why is this something you wanted to do? And then we're going to evolve into how you've taken that skill set and moved into doing portraits and artwork. But pinstriping, why pinstriping? I always enjoyed the, uh, you know, you, you see a really nice car and you go up to it and all of a sudden there's this pinstripe, you know, and, and you look at it and says, wow, that's, that's really cool. It really made the part of the car pop or what have you. So the way I got into it was when I was building my bike, my V star, the fella that was going to paint it for me, he, uh, he was doing pinstriping and, uh, airbrushing. So I went over there and I started working on my bike and I was off work because of uh, surgery. So, I went down there and I started working in the garage and he handed me a brush and some paint says, here, give this a shot. I want to see what you can do. So I did a couple lines and he's like, he says, that's pretty good. And I'm like, well, okay. So I played around with it for a little bit. So then the next day I went in there, he actually had brand new cans of paint and a couple brushes and handed it to me. And that's pretty much the start of it. So just started practicing and practicing and practicing. And there's a lot of items in the house that have pinstripes on it. <laughs> yeah. <now. laughs> everything in your house from the refrigerator to the washer and dryer, the doors, yeah, your yeah, shoes, exactly. everything's pinstriped. Yeah. So uh, my wife asked me to please slow down a little bit. Yeah. So yeah, I'm tired. I did so. <laughs> I'm tired of seeing my purse with pinstripes on it and everything else that I have. Yeah. Well, you know, part of it, what you mentioned, there's a couple of things you mentioned here. One is somebody being nice to you and offering you an opportunity it goes back to your original quote. But the other part of it is practice and having the right tools. And when I see pinstripers, one of the things they always have is that brush. 
there's this very special kind of brush that the paint loads up on nicely and transfers nicely. But the other piece of it is their hand. Uh, do you drink much coffee before you do pinstriping? <laughs> no. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I do not. Yeah. If anything, uh, depending on what time of the day it is, I might have a beer. Yeah, you know, if, to calm if I you ate down. something with sugar in it prior to, but uh, yeah. no, for the most part, I try not to drink any coffee prior to doing it striping. No kidding. So let me ask you, when you have the right tools and so forth, I mean, is it really a simple... I mean, there's two components here. One is just being able to lay paint down smoothly. The other is then the design aspect. Do you have a background in design? Uh, no. I mean, in high school, I did take two years of commercial art out the vocational school, and, and that's the only form, formal art training I've ever had. Other than that, I just enjoy drawing and looking at stuff. And a lot of times when I was younger, well, still to this day, you know, I got an idea in my head, but get it to come through – to the end of the hand, that was always a hard part. And um, for some reason, it's finally starting to come together for me. When I started doing my portraits, that's that really, um, yeah, it really changed when I started doing those. Yeah, well, let's migrate into that because pinstriping is one thing. What we all know is pinstriping is either hot rod type pinstriping with very unique designs and shapes or Simple pinstripes, when I bought my first car, which was a 79 Scirocco, it was a metallic gr uh, green color with a tan interior. And I put those, this is in the 80s, late 70s, 80. And so I put those classic uh, BBS gold basket weave wheels on it, which were popular back in the day. Right, right. And I thought, you know, this car needs an accent. And I hired a guy to do gold pinstripe down the side. And I wanted, I didn't want tape. I wanted it painted. And so this guy, I was really nervous because it was my first new car. And I thought, okay, man, I hope I've hired the right guy. And, you know, I could, could you kind of show me some stuff you've done? And he showed me. And I said, I don't, I just want simple lines, but I, I want you to maybe do something a little unique at the ends, the way it ends. Uh, and I said, uh, but I don't want anything crazy. You know, I'm a very conservative car guy. And there's a German car, Gregorio design, very simple lines. And what he ended up doing was a, a nice, line and then a thinner line below it but as i watched him do it i was just going oh my gosh how is he doing this i mean just running down the whole length of the car not wavering the thickness stayed almost exactly the same but it had just enough variance to look hand done but it kind of blew me away so that's basically practice 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 right yeah uh, especially pulling a long line like that is an art form in itself you have a lot of guys that do the designs on the deck lid, around the door handles and that, but go from the front of the car to the back of the car and have it look like it was. It was tape. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that alone is an art form. Right. And anybody that says it's not, it's never tried it because it's, it's crazy. I, I could go short distances to this day if I've only been doing this for about seven years now. There's guys that have been doing it 40 years. Right. And and you could, I mean, oh, man, it's just amazing. Just amazing. There's a video I watched of a guy doing a motorcycle gas tank. Have you seen that? I know exactly the, what the black tank yes. with the gold paint. Yes. And he's sitting there almost in a tuxedo he could be because it was absolutely amazing. He just spun it around and in no time he had that thing striped. I mentioned earlier, you took this to another level. You then decided to try some portraitures, but you're doing it with a pinstripe technique. Can you explain, because we're obviously audio here, number one, what that is, how, how people can envision that. I'll put a picture on Keith's show notes page on the Cars yeah website. You can see an example of one he did of uh, one of the uh, famous singers from Kiss, I believe it yeah. was. Yeah. yeah. Where did you come up with this idea? You know, I, Ryan Evans, who works for uh, Counts Customs, he's a pinstriper. And he was coming to the one show in Cleveland that uh, I was going to for, um, it was a panel jam at the one car show at the IX Center. for, uh, And we would raise, it was called Crazy Paint. And we would sell everything that week and raise money for uh, charity. 
So he was there and I wanted to give him a piece because I was just a big fan and I, I, I didn't know what to do and I wanted to do something different. So I had his picture and I'm like, well, he's a pinstriper. I'm a pinstriper. I want to pinstripe his face. <laughs> so I did it and uh, he liked it. And when I look at that one compared to what I'm doing now, it's, it's, it's funny. It really is funny because what I did, actually, I sent it to him and um, he, he couldn't make it that time to the show. So I, I actually sent it to him out in uh, Vegas. And it was uh, two years later, I sent him another one that I used the same exact picture on. And he was blown away. He's like, he couldn't believe how it evolved. And I can't believe how it's involved, evolved because... When I do them, I just, I just do it. And then when I sit back, it's like, oh, wow, I didn't realize I, I did that. And it's a learning experience every time I do one. Well, with art, my father was an architect but also an artist, and he always said that anybody can be an artist, but you have to practice. It's like a musical instrument or a voice or anything, driving, seat time. You have to practice, 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 and you, you have to do it even when you don't feel like doing it to keep getting better and better and evolving. And when you look at great artists, where they started and then where they started doing things that made them famous, let's take Picasso, for instance. When people think of Picasso's work, you think of these abstract, crazy, bizarre-looking things. But when you look at his early stuff, it was more like, well, I won't say normal, but it was more of like a real painting of a real thing. Right. But then he evolved. Even Jackson Pollock. The splatter painter artist, you know, I mean, yeah. he, his first works were of things that look like paintings of ducks and mountains and whatever it might be. Right. And right. then he evolved into something. So I would see that what or I can see that what you're doing with these portraitures will and have eat, not only gotten better, crisper, cleaner, but they'll evolve into something. And who knows where you're going to end up here, Keith? Yeah, I, I don't know. I hope uh, on a billboard somewhere. But yeah, I don't know where I'm going to end up at. But uh I just thoroughly enjoy it. Well, that's cool. What is it about pinstriping that you enjoy so much? It's something, if you do it on a vehicle if and you're using paint and a brush, if you mess it up, you can take it off and redo it within a reasonable amount of time. The big kick I get is when the person you're doing it for sees it and then you see the smile on their face. And when I do a painting for somebody and I send it to them and... I, you know, people with their animals, they get their painting and then they cry because their pet passed away and I, they says it looks just like them. Yeah. And um, when, that that makes me feel great. I mean, uh, so that's what I get a big charge out of. That's That's what makes me continue to go on with it. Do you prefer the portraiture type artwork pinstriping to vehicles or they both have equal rewards for you? They're both equal rewards. The um, the portrait painting, I can go downstairs and do it whenever I want. The pinstripe for a vehicle, you know, I'll set time aside and go to someone's house or they'll come here or if I'm at a show or something like that. Uh, either or, I thoroughly enjoy just doing it. I, I, like I said, when I started it and then the, the people that I met through it, is just amazing. Just yeah, amazing. Absolutely. What are some of the interesting vehicles you've pinstriped? <laughs> to be honest, I haven't done a whole lot. I've done a lot of motorcycles. Okay. Um, I did my very first one was a 59 Ford Ranchero. And this is the very first job that I did. And this is going to be the most interesting one that I've ever done because it was my first one. Yeah. I had all my artwork on display at a show. And this gentleman come up to me and he goes, have you ever pinstriped a vehicle? And I says, yeah, my own. And that was the extent of it. And he, he just walked away. And I'm like, my wife was there. I go, well, that didn't go well. And we just laughed. So then this other gentleman comes in and goes, hey, I want you to come out and pinstripe my ranchero. And I'm like, okay. So I look at my wife and she shrugs her shoulders. I says, well, let me come out and look at it. So I went out and looked at it. Well, sure enough, that guy that came in first was his friend. We start talking, and um, I ended up pinstriping his car there in the parking lot, and I've done numerous projects for him on that same vehicle. We just keep adding to it. <laughs> and so I always credit him for getting me out 
you know, having enough guts to go out and actually do it. You won. Yeah, you got to start. Everybody's got to start somewhere. And this was a big car show. I had hundreds of people watching me while I was doing it. So, yeah, it was a little nerve wracking. Oh, yeah. Pressure's on not only the first car, but you got an audience. That makes it even more crazy. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Talk about needing a steady, very steady hand for sure. Yeah. I always ask my guests about a big challenge they faced in their life, and it's more about the reward of the learning experience, not so much the bad side, but, you know, you have to go through that. So walk us through one of those times in your life, but more importantly, what did you learn from it so you can move forward in a positive way? Well, don't be afraid to take a chance on doing something. You know, like people say, hey, can you do this? You know, that that's the answer or the question I get all the, can you do this? And I says, I don't know, but I'll give it a shot, you know, and I do it. And the next time I, I see them, they love it. And they said, hey, so-and-so wants to do it again. So uh, I, I think don't be afraid to give it a shot. Give it a chance, you know, try it. The sad part about getting older, um, you're going to less parties and more funerals. Yeah. So yeah. what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to live my life and enjoy what time I have. And um, I, I think that's, you know, trying these new things is really making it uh, yeah. enjoy. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I commend you for taking on something new that you've never done before and getting out there and trying to make a go of it. And yeah, you just have to get out there and do it uh, and overcome those challenges of the fear factor and everything else that comes with something new. But uh, dare to fail is what I say, and yeah. especially in, in a new year. And if anything, what last year taught us was, you know, we may not be around as long as we think we might be around. So you better get out there and get living. Uh, what was that line from the Shawshank Redemption? You either get living or you get dying, something like that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, maybe not as morbid as that, but at any rate, you got to get out there and, and try things. Let's take a short break. We come back. I'm going to talk a little bit. Have you talk a little bit about your passion for cars and how you got into this and motorcycles? So sit tight. We'll be right back. How did you discover your path to a fulfilling life? Too many young people flounder in finding an education and a career that fits. But for those who have a passion for cars, trucks, and motorcycles, and who love working with their hands, problem solving, and fixing things, a career as a professional auto technician is incredibly rewarding. Cars Yeah! is pleased to team up with Tech Force Foundation, our charity of choice in bringing scholarships, technical education, and hands-on experience to young people so they can discover a possible future. Join me and lend your support by visiting techforce.org today. GS Events was founded by Cindy Sisson and Teresa Gilpatrick. Together, they create strategic alliances, curated events, and business development connecting automotive brands to discerning audiences. Their flagship offering, Women Shifting Gears, amplifies women's voices and participation in the automotive culture. Through strategically developed events, they create innovative concepts and collaborations that create remarkable professional and personal experiences you won't find anywhere else. GS Events' immersive, inclusive opportunities create networking, skill building, and unforgettable experiences. Whether you enjoy rallies, concours, auctions, restoration, the business side of collected cars, or you always have yearned to expand your skills to drive vehicles, To its fullest potential, GS Events has automotive events and experiences designed just for you. And by the way, both Cindy and Teresa are past guests here on Cars Yeah, so give them a listen. You can find gsevents.live on their website today. All right, we are back, and I'd love for you to share a story that instigated this passion that you have for cars, motorcycles, pinstriping. Is this something that started as a kid or did this something that came along later? The passion with the cars, my dad used to drive stock car back in the day and that was before I was in the picture. And so after that, um, he bought an old T-Bird from a friend of his and it, it was a late 60s model. My job was to clean up the interior of this vehicle. It was white leather, the red carpet, and I, it, this, the inside of it was unbelievable. It was bad. I scrubbed on that thing and scrubbed on it and scrubbed on it. And in the meantime, I'm helping my dad with the motor. And this is all before I was old enough to drive. But he kept saying it was going to be my car. Ah, it got you some incentive. Yeah, and I believed him. <laughs> <laughs> so I kept working on it and working on it. And then he finally came up and we, it ended up looking gorgeous. The guy my dad bought it off of, he was like, 
holy cow, he couldn't believe it. Yeah. It was running really good. The engine sounded real good. So my dad says, hey, this guy made us an offer I can't refuse. And I was like, okay. Yeah. He goes, but we'll get another one. So we sold that one. But it was just fun working with my dad and, and doing that with the car. And, and as far as the motorcycles go, I always liked them. And I didn't have one until I was in my mid-20s. And when I got that, it was just something that I always enjoyed the people you meet on a bike, you know, that, that story about the, you meet the nicest people on a Honda. Yeah. Well, you meet the nicest people on two wheels and, and they're, it's just amazing the people that I've met and a friend of ours, a mutual friend of ours, Lewis Lee, we both ride. And that's how I met him, you know, with the motorcycles and stuff like that and the car shows and stuff. So, uh, we've become good friends. So yeah, it's just amazing. Yeah, Lewis is a great guy. He's uh, introduced me to some amazing people. I want to thank him for making a connection here. He's he's awesome. Yeah, he's my brother from another mother, as they say. Yeah, that's yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. And he he doesn't live far from me, so oh we, good. Yeah, we're in the same area. Okay, so. cool. That's awesome. Well, tell me about a really special bike or car in your life. Something that really stands out, and maybe share a memory about that vehicle. Well. The big one is uh, my V-Star again. I keep bringing that one up. But that's that's the one that got me going on the pinstriping and customizing. I mean, it's a I built fiberglass saddlebags. I have 59 Cadillac taillights on it. It's got a gold metal flake with candy paint job and airbrushing and pinstriping. And uh, I've won some awards. Every year I add a little something different to it. So it's fun. And I just love when I'm sitting there on it or pull up to it and people come around and start asking me about it. And I just, I love to tell them about it. You know, it's just fun. I think that's what I, with any car guy, someone comes over and starts looking at your car. You, you want to tell them what you did and how you did it. And sure. So it, it's just, like I said, it, again, it, it, it all revolves around the people you meet. I hear that over and over again about the motorcycle, the car industry, the hobby. It really is the people. The, these motorcycles and cars really are just the catalyst that bring us all together Yeah, and uh, bond us all together. Here's a bit of an introspective question for you, Keith. If you woke up tomorrow and you were a car, now this isn't what you want to be. This is taking your personality and what it would be as a vehicle. Could be a bike, could be a car. What would Keith Sturgeon be? And more importantly, why? Well, it'd be, if it was a, a truck or a car, a vehicle, a four-wheel vehicle, it'd be an off-road four by four, and if it was a motorcycle, it'd be an enduro. Oh, and the reason for that is because I can clean up and go somewhere nice, but then I could just turn around and go off-road. <laughs> you know? Yeah. There's so many different. I'm into so many different things. I can go one direction now in 20 minutes. I'm I'm heading west. It's just. <laughs> That's my personality. Yeah, can go anywhere. I really like something. I, I I give it a shot, and but I'm game for anything. So that's that's why I would say uh, that type of vehicle okay. or that vehicle. Nicely done. Thank you. Now, what's one of your personal habits you believe has helped contribute to your successes in life? I get mad at myself, and I keep trying and trying and trying until I get it right. Right in my eye, maybe, and not in someone else's. But if I'm satisfied, then that's probably my biggest trait that helps me go. I got it. Uh, how about if I could arrange for you to have a drink or a meal with anyone in the automotive industry, living or someone who's passed, who would it be? Big Daddy Ed Roth. <laughs> yeah. I got to meet him as a kid at a car show. Uh, I have a poster that he signed for me. You could buy a poster and then he would sign it, you know, and get a picture with him. I don't know whatever happened to the picture. Somehow got probably tossed when I moved away from home or whatever, but I still have that poster. Yeah. Yeah. And of course, I as a kid, you and I are somewhat of the same generation. All those models I used to build of, you know, the rat fink and all that kind of fun stuff. And he was certainly a pinstriper. Yeah, he was a pinstriper and his his car designs are just crazy. I, I love them. Yeah, the bubble tops and everything. I, I would... I would love to have a bubble top. Uh, I just think they're so cool. I mean, and to see, he didn't know how to make any of that. He just kept trying and trying and trying. And I think that's what's so cool about it. He figured out a way to do it. Absolutely. When my son was about, oh, six or seven or eight, I thought, okay, I want to relive my youth by buying some models of Rat Fink and some of those beatnik bandits and things 
and building them with him. So I went on eBay and I found a guy selling these vintage still in the box stuff and I bought them and I got them and I sent him a note and I said, Hey, thanks. These are really cool. I'm going to have fun building these with my son. And he <laughs> sends me this email. He's like, stop. No, you, this, you, you're going to destroy the value. Blah, blah, blah. I said, you don't understand. That's not why I bought them from you. I don't care about the value. I'm trying to relive my youth and get my son excited about something that I did. And uh, you'll laugh at this, Keith, because the first one we did, at one point, my son looked at me and said, Dad, when am I going to get to build the model? <laughs> <laughs> That's when I had to do a little bit of a check and go, all right, yeah, I did buy this for you, not for me. And my wife just laughed. She goes, I think you bought those for yourself. <laughs> so. Yeah, we kind of do that one. We can always say, oh, I bought this for the boy. <laughs> yeah, I know. That was my excuse for spending stupid money. But how about when it comes to automotive advice or pinstriping or art advice? What's the best advice someone else ever gave to you? Well, with automotive, it'd be make sure you change your oil. Yeah, pretty basic. But, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, art, uh, you know, which is don't be afraid to try it. You know, just give it a shot. Yeah. Again, you know, keep going back. Don't be afraid to try it. And a lot of times I've been hesitant on trying to do something. And um, I do that a lot. I worry too much. And this year, I'm not I'm not going to do that this year. I'm I'm going to full, full bore ahead. Uh, that's, yeah, that's what I want to do. So I want to try not to worry as much. No, that's a great advice. Try not to worry as much and try new things. Yeah, great that's a great quote for the new year, that's for sure. Now, there's so many great resources for us all these days. Is there a go-to for you that you find yourself using or sourcing often? Again, you got your YouTube that has a lot of like cool videos. And when I first started into uh, pinstriping, I did look at a lot of those, you know, try to learn from those good habits and bad habits and just, you know, how to hold the brush, how to how to palette your brush, Um what kind of paint to use you know there's there's a lot of different things to to go through but probably youtube and just the internet itself you know doing a google searches and stuff like that if you find a subject you're interested in so that's what i was always doing yeah there's a local guy here i've known for years and i've been trying to get him on my show i'm going to get him one of these days i think he might be a little shy his name's mark dalton and he is a beautiful sign painter artist pinstriper but he's evolved into quite a spectacular artist painter and he mm -hmm. loves fishing so he does a lot of trouts and the details of all the colors of the trouts and things like that so you never know where this pinstriping pinstriping portraiture may take you into the future uh it's just about doing it and trying it is there a book that you've read maybe in the past that you might want to share that you think is worth reading uh, yeah, I was always a fan of Walt Disney and there's a book it's called, uh, if I'm not mistaken, it started with a mouse with the thing with Walt Disney. Yeah. He went bankrupt two or three times. Uh, but when he started and wanted to develop something that no one knew what he was talking about, no one knew, or there was no such tool, he would make it, you know, the cameras he built, and, you know, and stuff like that. And he was a, he was a true pioneer in that field of animation. And I just admired how he wanted something. He went out and got it. And that's I finally woke up and that's what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm trying my best now. It started with a mouse. Well, I'll make sure I put a link to that book on Keith's show notes page. You can find that and all the other resources he shared today. Just go to carsyeah.com, type in Keith Sturgeon. And you'll find it right there. All right, Keith, today's a fun day because it's the new year and I'm going to buy you a collector car or collector motorcycle. Uh, anything in the world that exists, I'm going to park it in your garage. It doesn't matter where it is, how much it costs. It's going to become yours. What would it be? Yeah, a, a 55 Nomad. Oh, okay. That's kind of cool. I, that kind of works with the vibe we got going here. Ever since I can remember, I just love that vehicle. You know, being a two-door instead of a four-door station, just the body lines, it's just a beautiful car. And you just don't see that many of them. No. And uh, that that's one vehicle I always liked. Now, I would definitely do probably a couple modifications to it. I'm kind of guessing you might do yeah. that. So let's start with the color. What would the color be? Maybe some candy color? Would it be some kind of a hot rod, resto mod type thing? Yeah. There, it wouldn't be a simple color. It, because 
I, I like the bright colors and it's different. Yeah. I'd have to think on that one. I'd probably be in a, it, it would be a candy color. Yep. For sure. Over metal flake. But I'm, I'm really, I don't know which one it would be. <laughs> well, you better get that figured out. Cause you know, uh, huh? my offer may not stand for too long. I might be on to the next guest tomorrow. Well, and... I got your email address. Oh, that's phone. right. Oh, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll tell you something funny. I had a guy uh, recently had a birthday and he said, hey, Mark, where's that GTO that you promised me when I was on your show? And I said, well, there's not many around. I'm still looking. So be patient. So, uh, yeah, I'll get to work on that. I'm guessing this Nomad's going to have a couple pinstripes on it, too. Oh, yeah, without a doubt. Absolutely. you taking me on a fun ride today, my friend. This has been great. I will, before I let you go, though, what's one little piece of wisdom or guidance you might offer our listeners before you drive off into the sunset in that 55 Nomad? Just don't be afraid to try anything, no matter what it is. Something totally out of, you know, food, whatever. I mean, I'm eating more stuff that I've never eaten before. <laughs> <laughs> well, be careful. Like, yeah, don't eat too it. much of it. But, yeah, try different things, you know. Life is short. Life is precious. and Yeah. You know, get out there and do stuff that you've you've only dreamed of. As I say in this new year, dare to fail. Give it a shot. Keith's a good example of that. You know, not to mention the fact that this is he's kind of, you know, he's been doing this for some years, but he's still learning his craft. And he reached out to me and said, would you have me on your show? And I said, yeah, let's talk about what you're doing, the venture you're going on. So uh, absolutely. Uh, dare to be bold. Dare to do something you've never done, like pinstripe or eat some wild food or learn how to cook some food or be on a podcast. So there you go. Is there a way for people to follow you and what you're doing? Uh, yeah, you can go to my Instagram at uh, Skeeters Graphics, S-A-E-E-T-E-R-S Graphics, F-I-X. It's uh, okay. G-R-A-F-I-X. Okay, cool. Huh? Instagram and also on Facebook, I have a page there. Okay, is it under the same name? Yes. Okay, absolutely. I'll make sure I put links on his show notes page so you can follow what he's doing. Uh, you can follow his lead and get out there and do something new this year. Try something different. You never know where it might take you. might end up on Cars Yow Podcast. You never know. You can find everything on Keith's show notes page here today. Keith, a happy new year to you. Uh, my hat's off to you. Can't wait to see how you progress and evolve in the future here. And if you guys want to see a, an example of this pinstripe portraiture you can go to Keith Shono's page and there's a picture right there of what he's done so check it out thanks for being so generous today with your time your expertise and for sharing your life with the Cars Yow listeners until you and I talk again or you come over and pinstripe my car I'll see you down the road all right thank you very much you're welcome so what do you do after running a race team for 27 years with over 100 podiums, multiple Daytona wins, and a win at Le Mans? Well, if you're racer and the Racers Group team owner, Kevin Buckler, you start Adobe Road Winery. It's located in Petaluma, California, and he and his team have created a winning combination with the Racing Series, four ultra-premium red wine blends that are in a class of their own. Like racing, these wines comprise of art, precision, engineering, science, wrapped in a whole lot of fun. You can choose from four blends titled Redline, Apex, Shift, and the 24. Today, I'm going to talk about Shift. This wine was awarded 93 points by Robert Parker's Wine Advocate. It's balanced and spicy with dark blueberries and a cigar aroma. The unique bottle shape features a vintage-inspired metal gated shift back with carbon fiber and the cork is topped with a five-speed shift knob. That's right. There's going to be some battles at the dinner table on who gets to keep the cork after this bottle has been enjoyed. The Racing Series is a delicious gift for the automotive enthusiast in your life. And I've got a deal for you. If you use the code CARSYA, all one word in caps, at checkout, you get $10 off any purchase of the wines from the Racing Series. Your wine ships promptly and arrives quickly right at your door. Use the code CARSYA at checkout and get $10 off your purchase from the Racing Series today. There's always a seat at the table for excellence with the Racing Series. Go to adoberoadwines.com and use the code CARSYA today. <coughs> Cheers! Did you know that CARSYA is in the top 1% of all podcasts based on listenership according to Libsyn, the premier RSS feed for podcasts 
in the United States. That's right. And Cars Yeah is the only five-day-a-week automotive-focused podcast for you to get your message into the ears of thousands of listeners daily from all over the world. Plus, DuPont Registry recommended Cars Yeah is one of their top 10 car podcasts for you to enjoy. Cars yeah has experienced tremendous growth, plus your ads are evergreen, meaning they never go away. And more and more listeners find Cars yeah every day for their daily dose of automotive inspiration. Do you want to expose your brand to a highly targeted list of automotive enthusiasts in a very unique in very personal way, well, I can help you. Contact me, Mark Green, at mark at carsyad.com or through the website at carsyad.com today to learn more. Thank you so much for joining us on today's ride here at Cars Yeah. Drive on over to carsyeah.com to find show notes and inspiring automotive fun. Download your free copy of Filler Up, a fun book filled with gorgeous photographs of fuel filler fun, including quotes from more inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Download your copy today, and we'll see you next time on Cars Yeah!